Hello everyone, hello everyone, hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to talk about my experiences with the new 2016 MacBook Pro. Specifically, I will be comparing and contrasting it to that, a Hackintosh that I built last April. Can you tell where this video is going already? This video may seem like a major departure from my regular Japanese content, but in a way it's actually a return to my roots as my first video from 2016 was also a sarcastic English tech review. Hey guys, this is Andrew from Hi-Fi Reviews and this is the next flagship killer. Say hello to the Phonics 35Z. My old 2012 MacBook Pro had a faulty graphics card, so I decided to build a Hackintosh in its place. My line of reasoning, I'm an Apple sheep besides my phone, but I can't afford to buy a new top-of-the-line MacBook Pro. What are my options? Watched a few MKBHD videos, lurked around the Tony Mac forums for about a week. My conclusion, with the Hackintosh, I could build a machine that was much more powerful than an iMac for a fraction of the price, which would give me more headroom for premium streaming services such as Netflix or browsers. So I decided to take the plunge and I built this machine. First, a little bit of context. As mentioned earlier, I use my machine primarily to edit videos. I try to make comedic videos on YouTube and I also teach Japanese on Patreon. It is a real job, mom. So I use my machine primarily to script videos, edit videos, export videos, watch movies, YouTube, Asa Akira films, listen to music, it could be misconstrued that I'm a professional YouTuber as around half of my monthly income comes from the videos that I make, but in reality, I'm just poor. Okay, so let's talk about the Hackintosh. I think it's safe to say that there's a huge variety in terms of what people want in a computer. Being a comedic YouTube hack, I wanted a powerful machine that looked good because like most members of our wasteful society, I've convinced myself that having a shiny computer case will somehow help me with my creative endeavors. Specifically, I've duped myself into thinking there is some direct correlation between the opacity of these tempered glass panels and my ability to construct a joke. I opted for an Intel 6700K, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance, an AMD R9 390, and a speedy Samsung 950 Pro. Cooling with a Cryorig H7. Why no water cooling, you say? Well, because let's be honest, it's not what's inside this case that's uh, holding me back from getting a silver YouTube play button, is it? It's this case. It needs more glass. So I put it together and installed El Capitan using the official Tony Mac guide. Or at least I tried, crying. The video I uploaded to YouTube in which I showcased my completed Hackintosh build was actually a sham. The computer in this shot did not have working internet, sound, or Bluetooth. It took me about a week to get all of these functions working. So this brings me to point one of the Hackintosh experience, the setup, or what I call the uh, fording the river of woe. This was my first computer build and the build itself was fine, enjoyable even at times, but the installation of the OS El Capitan was likable to the upper levels of Dante's Inferno. Lust after the wrong component, and you're at the mercy of the internet's violent winds. Or my jokes falling flat. Being a particularly greedy builder who bought an AMD R9 390, I found myself pushing boulders and searching for workarounds for more than a week. I never found a way to get the audio on my monitor working, so I went out and bought a pair of speakers. Motherboard Bluetooth didn't work, so I went out and ordered a USB dongle. Wi-Fi was perpetually grayed out, so I ordered an ethernet cable off of Amazon. And to solve the 4K at 60 hertz issues, I just gave up and left it at 30. After everything was said and done, it felt kind of like the computer, although beautiful, felt like it was being held together by duct tape. Now that being said, the Final Cut Pro render times were very fast, much faster than my old 2012 MacBook Pro, which by this time had been completely repaired free of charge. TLDR for the installation process, only use parts that are found on the Tony Mac 86 official build log, unless you're a masochist and you're actually interested in modern parts like NVMe hard drives or Polaris graphics cards. Either way, I would say add no less than 10 hours to your expected build time, seven hours wandering the burning desert looking for solutions and three hours of frustration crying. And now the Hackintosh user experience. I realize I haven't talked about the MacBook Pro yet, but I assure you it's coming. And don't worry, there will be plenty of ammunition for both the PC Master Race and Apple fanboys alike. What's it like using it every day, uploading videos, editing videos on it for nine months straight? Well, to spice up the narration, I thought I would add in some supplementary visuals. That's a redundant phrase right there, whatever. Um, story through movement, right? Cue the uh, Studio Ghibli quote right here. So we're gonna do this next bit in real time. First thing we do would be turn on the computer. Let's time the whole thing. 
few seconds later, the BIOS uh, starts up and then Clover should appear. As you can tell, yes, I am still reading off of my script because I thought it would be kind of fun and quirky if I delivered this bit in a meta kind of way, i.e. I'm that bad at off-the-cuff narration. A few seconds later, the login process begins, and here we are. Here we go. Black screen. Mac OS has started and we are completely logged in, but we can't see it because the graphics card isn't outputting any data to the screen. This didn't used to happen. I updated OS X in the App Store once after a major security update came out and the screen started to go black much like my soul. Bad delivery. In order to get things uh, displayed properly, first we have to disable uh, inject EDID in Clover bootloader. So next we have to restart the computer. And here we go. So we've restarted and now we need to go stop the auto startup and modify a condition in Clover. So we're not logged in yet. We're going to go into options, graphics injector, and deselect uh, inject EDID. I should note that at this step we're using a USB keyboard rather than the Bluetooth keyboard uh, as we are not logged into the main operating system yet. Um, I'm permanently borrowing this from a friend. I'm doing that joke as well. Okay. Okay. So I've disabled inject EDID, gone back to the main menu, and here we and go. Here we and go. go. So this should should work. Yes, we are in to El Capitan. And we'll wait a second to see if Bluetooth comes up. The computer should, should start looking for Bluetooth devices. And, and again, I've installed a Bluetooth dongle on the back of the computer. Okay, here we go, Bluetooth setup assistant. There isn't a wireless mouse or trackpad connection. Okay, so we're gonna go, looks like it's looking but not finding anything. So we're gonna use the wired USB keyboard. Am I legally uh, able to give this? What, does this make me a murderer? She says, you know, I don't like butter on my popcorn. I like popcorn on my butter. So we're logged in, finally. And it worked. So approximately 10 minutes in and we're up and running. At this point, we can do whatever we want. Sorry, they'll work as long as you don't use too many USB devices, which will often break the Bluetooth. Also, movies and iTunes or Amazon don't work. Also, a lot of webcam streaming services don't work. The good ones, really. Also, the power supply clicks. Also, I can't sleep the computer or the display won't turn back on. This is a universal issue for AMD graphics cards which most people use uh, when they build Hackintoshes because they're so much better and more optimized for Final Cut Pro. So best hardware for the job breaks the fundamental function of the computer. Sophocles would be proud. Now what you've been waiting for, render times. This computer has a Bruce X score of 14 seconds, which is basically Sonic the Hedgehog and PF Flyers fast. Something was wrong on the volcano. Coming! He ran like the wind. Lucky he was wearing his PF Flyers, the action shoe. Three times faster than this brand new baller MacBook Pro. But here's the catch. When I use Mac Final Cut Pro as I would in my normal workflow, the difference isn't so drastic. For example, if I apply a LUT to a five minute ProRes clip, in this computer, it'll take a minute and 22 seconds, while in this computer, it'll take two minutes and 30 seconds. So for your average reasonable render time, the Hackintosh is about twice as fast as the 
uh, new MacBook Pro. Now I say reasonable render time because about half of the render tests that I see on YouTube look something like this. Hey everyone, to test out the render capabilities of my new computer, I've prepared four different streams of 8K footage that I've condensed into a single window. Now each stream has five different LUTs applied to it. Now I didn't want this to be too easy, so I've also turned on 12K screen recording and opened up three YouTube videos in Chrome. Let's see what the CPU temperatures are like. See, now that's a little bit higher than I was expecting. If we... So how about export times? Well, if we use the same five minute clip, uh, ProRes clip, and convert that into an H.26 file, we see that the Hackintosh does it in four minutes and 10 seconds, while the new MacBook does it in 50 seconds. Now this is real. I think it has something to do with quick sync. More on this in a bit. Finally, how many times I grind my teeth each day using the computers. As we can see, with the Hackintosh, I'm on track to reach the lower roots of my molars. Well, with the MacBook Pro, there's no indication I'll ever chip away even the outer enamel. So this computer renders faster than this one, but this one exports faster and it doesn't make me want to kill myself. Is the difference in export time is most likely a user-created problem? Yes. Have I tried to figure this out multiple times? Yes. Have I ever made any progress? No. Is this line of questioning going to have a satisfying punchline? No. On to the rapid fire Q&A. Why not use an NVIDIA card to fix the sleep wake issues? Well, that's because it would be a lot slower in Final Cut Pro, which is optimized for AMD hardware. Unless I bought a Titan, but I don't want to deal with a Titan. Why not buy an official Apple Bluetooth card to fix the Bluetooth issues? Well, that's because they are quite expensive and to install it would mean basically tearing the computer apart. I bought this computer to save money and I'm already so neck deep in peripheral. Why not leave the computer on if most of the issues come from the startup process? Well, that's because while the case is beautiful, the airflow isn't very good, so I don't want to subject the components to unnecessary amounts of heat and also dust. And I don't want to subject myself to unnecessary fan noise and high electric bills. I like to be able to turn off my computer when I'm done with a long project. Okay, so we've established that while the Hackintosh does a much better job at rendering than this new MacBook Pro, when it comes to my personal workflow, it's much slower due to all of the workarounds that I have to deal with. Right, so just install Windows on this machine and edit in Premiere, yeah? Son of a bitch. Which brings us to the MacBook Pro. First of all, the build quality and aesthetics are amazing. Naturally, this is uh, subjective. Haters gonna hate, players gonna play. Amazing screen, the dynamic range has been improved so skin tones look even more realistic. Incredible speakers, also good for adult media consumption. Touch bar is great. I can skip through the PG-13 bits without having to leave full screen. A lot of people are complaining about the lack of ports, but I used a USB SD card reader on the Hackintosh anyway, so it's a null point for me. Keyboard, so this one's polarizing a bit as well, but I have to give Apple credit for not including RGB lighting. And that's about it. Apparently a lot of people are experiencing battery life issues, but I had a 30 minute streaming session in the bathroom earlier today and left with 92% battery life, so I'm confident it will withstand my hipster sessions in Starbucks. FYI, Vaseline comes off the unibody quite easily with two clean baby wipes. Conclusion, as you can tell, I'm the exact kind of consumer that Apple made this computer for, the new YouTube bourgeoisie that many gamers and traditional computer professionals like to minimize. GUI pun there. I know a little more than basic HTML and I couldn't tell you how many more frames per second I could get in The Witcher 3 with a 10 series card from Nvidia. But as a third rate writer who cares most about a computer's ability to get me to stop thinking about it, I'm happy to recommend this machine. Although if I'm making a review about it, that doesn't make sense. And now the redundant conclusion because I'm insecure. If you like to tinker and want the most bang for your buck, build a PC or a Hackintosh from supported parts because if you don't, you're gonna experience some premature balding like me. If you dislike people who support Apple because they could get much better CPU temps if their computers weren't so goddamn thin, then dislike this video and leave a cynical comment. And if you're like me and you like to hang out in Starbucks and drown your insecurities in Ethiopian clover roast, then leave a comment on this video, send me a DM, put on your beanie and give me a high five because since November we've become the oppressed minority. You said you were gonna send out an email with how everyone did and you never did, so. Go on, take the money and...